Hello everyone. Welcome to uh, another podcast from Core Ninja Global, where we invite industry leaders from across different verticals to know about the product that they are building and the services that they are providing uh, to their customers. Uh, today we have Andrew Firestone from Mohammed uh, Charts. Mohammed Charts is a platform that is widely used by um, 8 million users has a lot of um, stars and reviews from different platforms, uh, GitHub as well. And, um, to, and, and in today's conversation, we're going to be uh, chatting with Andrew, who is the CEO of Marmit Chart, uh, to know more about their journey, what are their goals for the product, um, and how they're taking this forward. That's it. Uh, so, Andrew, uh, I want to start off with, uh, I, I was seeing it, your LinkedIn, you went to UCLA, then you started uh, at Antler, and then you did Watson and Mermit Chart, then Mermit Chart. One of the challenges when we work with entrepreneurs is uh, how they shape their uh, ideas into products. You were working at Watson in very different thing. It was a variety uh, a platform for uh, uh, a reward platform for uh, some of the apartments and stuff like that. Mermaid is a very different thing. It's a development. And how you and you raised three point two billion dollars for Watson. How did you manage this shift? I mean, why did you start working at Watson? Yeah. So kind of taking a step back uh, in my career was always looking to start a tech company and started out you know in college thinking about the different things that i was interested in my family had built a lot of companies i had built some companies when i was younger um, always looking for ideas and thinking about different ways i could turn them into businesses and uh, i was the first employee at a tech startup right out of college um, and then i spent uh, about five years doing private equity uh, for real estate. I uh, started a private equity fund building uh, apartment communities and um, and doing other types of uh, real estate projects, a couple tech projects. Um, and the thing that I was looking for was something kind of adjacent to what I had a skill set in. And so Watson was a connection of that, you know, as a uh, loyalty and rewards program for apartment communities. So kind of taking the knowledge from the real estate uh, experience that I had and then bringing that into tech. And then um, be before that, uh, I had spent a couple of years at a venture capital fund working in venture studios and was really fascinated with the model. And um, that's, how I that's how I connected with Mermaid um, was through the venture studio that the CEO of GitLab had started. So. Open Core Ventures uh, is uh, Sid Sabrandi's um, venture studio, and he finds popular open source projects. He partners with the creator. They build for six months, co-found a company together, and then they bring in kind of a co-founder CEO to then scale the business if it gets traction. And so they recruited me into the role about a year ago, um, about six months after I wound down Watson. And for me, it was a lot of the same types of skills that they needed for the business that I had uh, utilized at Watson, um, mostly just kind of running the go-to-market motion and building out the team and uh, raising the capital. Uh, we just closed our seed round led by Microsoft and with participation of 15 other great funds. And so, um, you know, it was kind of a really a happy marriage, but uh, the creator of Mermaid, the open source project, was uh, also the founder of, of Mermaid Chart. And we spent a lot of time together kind of talking about what he was looking to build. And I was really excited about that. I was excited about the relationship. I was excited to work with the CEO of GitLab. And I think it's such an interesting space because you are covering, you know, a billion potential users right of this type of software so it's a very broad space with a lot of deep niches within it and that was really exciting to me and it was exciting also that it was a really great piece of technology to apply to 
what was happening with large language models and uh, and AI. And so I thought, you know, sitting at the intersection of being out of a venture studio, being part of an open source project, being a part of this AI wave, it was at the intersection of three really interesting things that were happening in tech. And, um, you know, great fit for me. And it's been a great ride so far. Yeah, Andrew, one of the, one of the challenge I I struggle with, and I see other entrepreneurs struggle with too, is like how how to balance the ex excitement of doing too many things, and then eventually uh, uh, start focusing on one thing and go on full force. For me, saying Watson, you go found it. No, no, that's it. I'm done with Watson. Let's build Mermaid. This is a hard thing to do. This switch is very hard. I've been struggling with this. I've, I've struggled with this. How do you handle that thing as an entrepreneur? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think the the thing that I focus on, a lot of people were saying, hey, so how did you end up going from, you know, fintech, SaaS, in real estate to, you know, visual collaboration software for software engineers and general knowledge workers. And to me, you know, business is business. I don't think it's that vastly different, right? And the thing that I focus on is being able to learn faster and faster uh, every day and to be able to, you know, kind of digest the information quickly. Um, but in this case, I found a partner who was very technical, which is not my uh, strong suit. And I found a kind of advisor, co-founder of the business as CEO of GitLab, who knows open source really well, right? And so having those two partners, I was able to bring my skill set and, and, and go to market and fundraising and team building. And, you know, I didn't have to be an expert day one at, you know, the market. I could, you know, execute on the principles that I've used in my previous roles and they apply, you know, 70, 80 percent, and then you learn how to fill the gaps. Um, and so it's been uh, it's been an intense year because I'm digesting so much information about this new market. But for me, focusing on building a framework in which I can you know learn quickly and then also be able to kind of iterate towards the right space and have a team that fills my gaps um, together. It's it's a really good combination. And you know if you're selling software to businesses, you know, one business is not so different than than the next. Um, and we also have a, the benefit of the open source project where so much of the distribution comes from that. So we can just be completely obsessed with the product. We can be completely obsessed with the engineering side of things and the go to market piece. Um, I don't want to say it solves itself, but it, it does um, a lot on its own. Perfect. Got it. Um, Andrew, we've been doing diagrams for the last 10 years where software business or sales teams uh, build technology diagrams or architects build technology diagrams. And it's very hard to translate your idea into a diagram. It's, it's not an easy stuff. I mean, you, if you want others to uh, come at the same tables, you first thing you want to do is you want to bring a common framework through which you can collaborate. Diagnosis do that. It allows us to communicate complex ideas. Uh, with Mermaid chart, uh, I want to first start off with uh, how, uh, I mean, what's your feedback, how developers are using it? And then of course, we'll shift ours as well. What's our feedback, what's our learning? Uh, I want to uh, go a bit deep into how uh, developers are using Mermaid chart and how do you think? Because for us, and we have one deals because of great diagrams, because we were using it and we won two deals, uh, more than half a million dollars, just because they said, what great diagrams and to our part, we didn't tell them that we are using an app for this. We so let them fail that we built it. <laughs> so what, uh, what's your feedback, how, uh, how the development uh, commu communities are responding, how your Discord community is saying about it. What's, what's your feedback? Yeah, I mean, it's been really incredible. The way that the company was started was just an idea from a real problem that the creator had, uh, Canute, who created Mermaid. He was 
working in his code documentation and they had a Visio file, they lost the file and they lost their documentation for a whole piece of their code base, which was a disaster. And he thought there's got to be a better way to be able to have the diagram in code that you can actually edit in the code editor without having to touch your mouse, right? It's it just, you know, Markdown was becoming popular at the time. Um, and he thought, okay, I need to be able to have this, you know, directly within my code editor. And so he created the first, you know, piece of Mermaid. Um, his daughter was watching Little Mermaid uh, that night when he started the project, and that's where it got the name. Um, and so, you know, he solved, he, he created it to solve his own problem and code documentation so that he could be more efficient when he's uh, editing code. He wrote one blog post about it. And then 10 years later, you know, this year we'll have over 6 million people use the Mermaid Live editor. Um, and that's just the, you know, the web app of the open source editor, right? So, you know, we've got hundreds of thousands of users as well on the Mermaid chart side. And then there's, you know, millions of people using it locally. So it, it's incredible if you have a product that has that organic uh, growth trajectory and it really resonated with software engineers first for code documentation, then for architecture, then for communication. Um, and so there's enormous number of, of applications. With Mermaid Chart, our idea was to create Mermaid for everyone, right? So not everybody knows how to code, not everybody understands the structure of code, right? And so AI was a natural, um, you know, entry point into that. And now you can write with plain text and you can get really complex, you know, diagrams, which solves to your problem. You want to be able to create these diagrams, hard to figure out how to get them out. Uh, it's really not fun to have a graphical user interface. We have to drop nodes, you have to connect them. And then if you change one, then you've got to change them all. So the rendering algorithm that keeps everything organized for some people, when you're used to a graphical user interface, very frustrating because you want to be like, why can't I put this here? Um, but if you understand how it's structured, it's extremely efficient, right? Because the design is not the number one, it's the communication and it's the structure. Um, okay. And so that's been, that's been amazing. But and, 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 no and, and this is fascinating. Just want to uh, comment that this is very fascinating because I mostly do Android sales. I'm part of sales. And when we talk to software architects, what they do is they give us uh, software architecture and sales teams struggle to grasp that because they need to communicate to the customer. So yeah. especially on the edges where you want to talk to software architects, but you want more than that. You just want, don't want that software architects tell you you want some collaborative way to explain the complex ideas to the customer without bringing software architects with you in every call. That's the, that for us was that yeah. made our sales complete stack. We don't need no software architects in every call. They just tell us, and then we, with these, two, especially with Mermaid Chart, it allows us to uh, be, at, I'm not saying, but at least 30, 35% as good as software architects in terms of com explaining the complex idea. That's where we find most value out of my mature because you said about you want more mature for everyone not for software development that's what i am mostly fascinated about and passionate about. yeah yeah absolutely and so yeah i think it's really exciting and i think for us the future is to be able to expand on there's this huge universe of diagramming software right lucid chart and then there's the whiteboarding software which is more like miro or something like that um what we want to do is we want to expand the use cases for diagramming so that you can com communicate much more complex ideas from data that you wouldn't try to communicate because it would be too complex and in a visual to represent in a diagram, right? So linking with your databases, being able to understand everything that's in your GitHub, right? Understand everything that's in your website, understand your user journeys um, in a much more granular level. And so there's so much that you can do, both creating a diagram and then having that diagram be living. And then the future is really to actually be able to manage all of the work that comes from uh, that representation, right? So we see ourselves more as a challenger for ServiceNow that manages you know, these huge enterprise workflows than we see ourselves as a competitor of Lucidchart, even though today, 
we look like an, another diagramming software, but tomorrow, the next day, you know, it's a lot more about actually automating away the work than it is about just creating a visual. Yeah, and then I'm, I'm, I'm sure you also plan to add more collaboration tools to the workflow where teams can collaborate on a certain workflow or also like they're able to create workspaces where there's a collection of diagrams. I'm not sure if these features are covered in the pro uh, edition. I haven't tried it, but like for like one of the use cases that um, we adapt Lucid Chart for is for their collaboration feature and for the workspace feature. Um, mm -hmm. Apart from that, um, the workflow is quite straightforward in a sense. I use ChatGPT most of the time. I ask ChatGPT to vi visualize a complex idea for me. Um, with a mermaid code, I take that mermaid code to the mermaid library to train it, like helps you know generate the diagram for me. Um, Recently, I was experimenting with uh, these agentic AI, multi-AI agents, and um, I had to visualize the PRs and the uh, git commits. Um, mm -hmm. And I saw this, so like for visualization, I was exploring different things. Um, mm -hmm. And I saw this um, git graph diagram in Mermaid.js. Um, so I, I, I wrote this uh, AI agent, which basically is triggered whenever there is a GitHub uh, PR. And for the PR, I can, you know, uh, pull all the commits in and visualize those commits with um, Mermaid. Um, so it's tremendous. Um, one thing that I really appreciate is um, we generate a lot of documents through AI, especially reports and analytics that we do across all the repositories to trade productivity, performance, and output across all our teams. I wrote this um, AI agent, which basically listens for um, GitHub activity on our repositories and eventually create a Git graph for PRs and commits. Um, that's important. Um, we share it along with our release notes because we work on customer repositories and it's important what activity happened on the repositories uh, so that they can visualize um, everything. Um, and that agent is basically written uh, using Python. Um, so like, to, and then like we generate PDF uh, reports. So I think users will benefit a lot from the ability to export those diagrams uh, through PNG using an API. Uh, if we have that API where we can provide Mermaid code, for example, and then uh, mm -hmm provide the, the, the format that we want, 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 want the result to export in. And then, you know, we can take, you know, the resulting file and use it anywhere uh, we like, for example, embed it in a PDF report or send it or email or like do whatever we like uh, to do with it. Um, yeah. That's good. So right now uh, we're generating markdown um, for the reports, uh, but markdown um, GitHub basically, uh, GitHub Markdown has support for uh, Mermaid diagrams. Um, mm -hmm. So, like, currently we're doing Markdowns, but we definitely would like to, uh, you know, to, to have the ability to embed those in PDFs uh, as well in other formats. Yeah. So, that's something like, yeah. you know, can, can be made part of uh, roadmap. Yeah, no, I think it's a really interesting use case. And I think this is something we've gotten enormous number of requests for is an API for very similar purposes. And yeah. it's definitely on the roadmap. Uh, there's there's so much on the roadmap at the moment that, uh, you know, we just, when I joined, we were four people, now we're 15. So mm -hmm. we're 12 software engineers and three um, doing everything else. So very focused on the development side. We know where we need to go. We've got 10 years of data from customers about what they would like to see with Mermaid. And we have a lot of examples of individuals taking the technology and the software and applying it to different areas. And so we're, we've got a, a big head start and it's great. But like, like you said, you know, there's so many really interesting use cases like that, that 
we can build into the platform. And that's one of the things that's exciting about the company is there's so much opportunity. We're still building the foundation of the skyscraper, but uh, you know, we're, we're excited to see it start uh, climbing upwards. Yeah. So speak, speaking of skyscrapers, I just want to pick your brain on foundational models. Uh, generally, when we, as sales engineers, we use complexity, chat GPT, to uh, simplify the complex ideas. And when we use Mermaid, so if you see on one tab, we've opened Mermaid, on the other tab, there is chat GPT or complexity. So it goes hand in hand. Yeah. What future do you see that foundational Mod models has to play uh, in diagramming, and where do you see there's a there's a value that that we can untap using both foundational models and mermaid chart in conjunction? How do you see that? How do you see the foundational models role there? Yeah, I mean, I think it's going to become more and more part of how the work is done. Right. Like I think one of the reasons that if you go to the GPT store, three of the most popular GPTs use are diagramming centric. Right. So and most of them use Mermaid uh, as, as the foundation. Yeah. So uh, it's it's great that Mermaid kind of came first as the you know, as the coding language for this. It translates really well into large language models. And so it's it's the most prominently used. But I think that today you see a lot of uh, interface where it's chat based. I think yeah. that that's one of a very large number of interfaces that will exist, right? I think the command for from chat will be much, much less common than the command from a database or from an API, you know, especially for these um, for these different diagramming use cases where you're visualizing huge databases, you're visualizing these things that humans wouldn't attempt to visualize on their own. And I think that that's uh, going to become more and more common within other products and also as their own products. And there's going to be specialization in each of these niches to become really productive. ChatGPT is pretty good at generating diagrams, right? But if you use now Mermaid AI, it's a little bit better. Right. And soon it's going to be a, a lot better. Right. So you, you start to train on very specific, um, you know, use cases and uh, specific types of databases. You can start getting these really sophisticated diagrams, um, whereas right now it's relatively simple. Right. You're not getting the most complex outputs from ChatGPT um, and there's limitations usually on most of the commercially available products uh, out there. Our goal is to make them not only command based, but also living in real time. So you're constantly updating as your code base changes, your diagram of that code base, you know, should change uh, in real time as well, for example. So yeah. speaking of that, I mean, I just want to uh, have a, I think I would be most of the entrepreneurs, they use chat GPT as a foundation for very good products. And then they see it's like, uh, in the next release of JGPD, what they see, they're screwed up. Uh, so building a wrapper, perhaps, uh, I'm not sure how great this is. Mermaid, of course, is not a wrapper, but of course, I, I want to, as a as a uh, entrepreneur, as a uh, CEO of Mermaid, how do you see, how, how do you advise the entrepreneurs who are building their product on top of foundational models, how they can, find a more gap, more uh, better, uh, what I say, they want to be more better, right? Because they sure. don't want to be screwed up in the next version of charity. How to handle that? Because I've seen lots of entrepreneurs, they, that's exactly going on. Okay, what in what would be in uh, GPT-5, what would be in that are going to be over, uh, as you said, the top three apps on gpt diagram? Yeah, I think it really depends where they're building, right? I think if you're building in a deep niche where you have, um, you know, an opportunity to add a ton of data to the model, then that can be, you know, the value add. I mean, it's it's similar to any business, right? There, if you have a data advantage, now that advantage can be amplified, at least in the short term, with different uh, AI related features. I think that 
there's kind of two sides to this. There's the model on the back end, and then there's the interface. Those are the two areas I think you can innovate in, and then you can add data to enhance uh, ideally both of those. But you know, for entrepreneurs in general, I think that the models that exist today are good enough for proof of concept on a lot of things, right? But how good are they at actually executing the real job to be done? Often not that good, right? And to be good, you've got to train them on your own data set, or you've got to build an interface that's really custom so that the output is, is really valuable. Um, you know, so for us, I think people use ChatGPT similar to templates, right? So it's almost like a personalized template. You start your job in ChatGPT, but you don't finish it, right? And so we've we've kind of created our own our own version of that. Soon we'll have living templates where they can be customized, right, with ChatGPT. So instead of just getting that generic template for X Y Z, you can explain what you want. It'll give you a really sophisticated template. Um, you know, so it's another way to kind of start your work. But what what I want to do is I want to start your work and finish your work all in the same you know end to end interface. And that's something that's not being done uh, as much. And usually the connective tissue in between is a human, um, but there's so much that could be done without a human in the mix. And so you see AI on the front end, kind of starting projects, AI on the back end, kind of ending projects or enhancing the kind of output of the data. Um, but I think there's an opportunity to connect the dots. And I think it's, you know, the, the thing that's cool is you can build a product that has a lot of value now with an AI model, if you have that distribution, if you can marry that distribution with it. For us, we had the distribution already with, with Mermaid. And then we also had uh, a really large audience, a lot of customer feedback and a use case that's really applicable to AI. So you put those together, that becomes a, a pretty good company, we hope. Um, but you know, that's kind of the beginning of our journey. And now we're trying to figure out, okay, how do we connect the dots here? Yeah, I love um, this template uh, yeah. example. I think this is incredible. Yeah. Thank you for thank you for um, that. <laughs> yeah. Andrew, so we already have got a VS Code uh, extension for basically. Um, so, so so it basically uh, gets coupled with the VS Code default Markdown uh, preview extension. Um, yep. As you said that um, I, I can still use GitHub Copilot to actually generate a mermaid code for whatever I have in my repository, and then you know mm -hmm. uh, take that code to a Markdown file and then visualize it within my VS Code. Um, do yeah. you also plan to offer their extension? Basically, enrich this extension with the feature that we just spoke about, like a one-stop shop for all the diagramming. So. Uh, we can interact with that extension within our code editor and then actually generate diagrams without leaving our code editor. Um, so like instead of doing it in browser, like do it in our code editor. Absolutely. It's in production right now and would love to set you up with our product team to get your feedback on how to how to refine that because it's uh, we have released our plugin. It's not yeah. very good. Um, and the next version uh, is going to have all the things that you just mentioned. Um, mm -hmm. But but exactly, right? VS Code is probably the best plugin store for this type of uh, application. There's the one that you're talking about has 1.8 million installations, yeah. right? That's yeah. you know spectacular. What a great proof of concept for, for our business. Um, but it also has very limited functionality um, in that plugin. It just happens to be the best version of that uh, yeah. tool, but it's one person who built that. Um, we actually just acquired another VS Code plugin um, that has a similar, less uh, less installations, but uh, very similar functionality. And we're going to be updating both of them with the uh, kind of Mermaid 2.0 within the next three months or so. You know. Great. On on the last part, I mean, we have uh, several minutes left. Uh, Great. Uh, Andrew, uh, yesterday, uh, Meta released Loma 3.1, right? Mm -hmm. It's a new uh, uh, release of uh, uh, Loma family. 
uh, foundation models. One of the things I want to pick your brain as a business leader is uh, you are basically building this great product on top of open source, right? I mean, that's mm -hmm. your, I mean, that's uh, how, how, how you see open source foundational models versus, uh, uh, for example, open AI enterprise or businesses. Why I'm asking this is like we work with lots of businesses. Some of them are some of the world's most important institutes, and they ask us, like, how can we choose one between open AI enterprise versus open source, especially if they have same sort of parameters? That's my first question. How, what's what's open so what it means to when it comes to open source for foundation models? And second, I want to pick your brain on is your view of AI in the next five to seven years. You're working with some of the most elite developers in the world. What they tell you about AI when it comes to developer productivity? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think the um, the models. It's a challenge because the evolution is happening very quickly, right? So nobody really knows the right answer. I would say, and the right answer changes uh, constantly, right? In terms of what you know, what what will work for this uh, particular use case. What we've seen is that every model responds differently to the different use cases, right? So we're very deep into diagramming, you know, models. How, how good can we get our diagramming uh, to be? There's some platforms, actually one of our, um, our uh, kind of batch mates or one of the companies that just got funded by Microsoft M12s uh, as well as part of the GitHub fund. They have a platform that allows you to use all the different models that are available through one API. So it will, it will toggle between these different models, um, which I think is a pretty good idea because everybody's trying to test already, you know, these different, is it uh, these different models. Yeah. No, it's not Grok. I have to yeah. look up the name and, uh, yeah. but, yeah. but it's a, it's an interesting thing. And I think for us, we found that, uh, most models are not that good at diagramming. So, you know, that's uh, a good a good thing for us to some extent, but that <laughs> changes every release, right? So, you know, Claude comes out with their, you know, new thing, and that's actually pretty good, right? And they just, we're starting to see an enormous amount of traffic to our open source project. Originally, it was from ChatGPT, now it's coming from Claude, you know, and all these different plugins are, are pointing to our project because that's where, you know, most people want to go. Like we said with templates, you start your diagram with AI and then you finish it with an editor. Um, yeah. And so most people want all that into one. That's what our pro product uh, provides. But the the answer is a challenge because you know there there is no uh, there there is no right answer. But I think all the models are good for different things, um, and you just gotta keep testing them, and that you're not gonna make a decision and it'd be right forever. So it's going to be right for a very short period of time. Yeah. Incredible. Uh, I think on a final note, I mean, you're on product hunt recently on, uh, you went there like what, I think what as a, as a sales leader who works at the intersection of uh, both technology and sales, I want everyone out there who is doing sales and pre-sales and sales in general to use my chart. I think there's no better way to communicate complex ideas to the customers. You do not need software architects and they, are, frankly, they don't have that much. Uh, I mean, if sales requires lots of communication, different skills than software architecture, what good it is that imagine now I can explain that complete software architecture through uh, moment chart to my customer and win deals, right? I want everyone to use that. And that's why I'm so excited about moment chart. It's, it's incredible. And Andrew, I want you to be successful at this. I really want you to be successful at this. Very great thing out of it because that helps us a lot. And so helps people not to only software architects, but the people who are working on the edges of the technology. When software architects, they have to build a you know, software development, they have to build great diagram, they will. It's us who find it hard to go deeper into the code and come up with things like this, right? But AI can do that for us. And if we have that thing as a baseline, we can do a lot better job in explaining complex ideas to our customers. So thank you for doing it. And I wish you lots of success with Momit. You're doing an incredible job, Andrew. Appreciate it.
Appreciate it. Appreciate it, guys. Um, yeah, well, thanks for having me. And um, yeah, looking forward to keeping in touch and excited to yeah. see what you guys think of uh, our latest release. Yeah. Thank you. Very nice to hear, Andrew. Thank you so much. Right, thank for the you. Work. Take care. Bye -bye.